Hi, it's Kevin from AppMap. It is Thursday, December 5th, and I have not been in IntelliJ uh, with AppMap for a while, so I thought I would spin that up and, and put it through some of its paces with the Spring uh, Pet Clinic application, which is a good way to, to try out all the different features without without too much overhead. And, and you know, it's a good choice for just learning learning a way around the system. So, um, yeah, let's let's dig in. So, um, of course, I have uh, the app map plugin installed, and that gives me the app map tool window over here. And um, the two uh, the two primary components of this are the app map data and the the Navi chat. Navi is the the AI that uses your code plus app map data to um, provide question answers to questions, documentation, reverse engineering, and things like that. So I can fire this up and, and ask pretty much whatever I want, and it will use the information that's in my code repo here, along with AppMap data, um, to, to answer my questions about, about the code repo. So one of the things that uh, you know a lot of people um, ask us about is about actually recording AppMap data. And especially in IntelliJ, which is a complicated environment, you know, really powerful once you learn it, but uh, there's a lot of buttons and AppMap adds more buttons. And um, so it's just always kind of a question about, about doing that. And I wanted to do that in a few different ways, along with showing off some Navi features. And before I do that, I just wanna point out one like key piece of information that you can find it at appmap.io slash docs in the reference section, app map agent for Java. So there's all kinds of different integrations that we've done here with, with app map, with VS code and with IntelliJ to make app map data. But for Java, it really, it, it all boils down to one thing, which is passing this Java agent flag um, and passing a Java agent jar, which is the app map dot jar which instruments your code when you when you start really any process. And one of the things that the uh, map plugin does is when you install it, it downloads this jar file and puts it in your home directory in .appmap lib java appmap .jar. So all the different ways, of all the different ways that you'll see to make app map data with this, with this plugin, they're really all about adding that configuration. So, um, there are a bunch of different ways to run to run uh, run code in this environment, and each of them, you know, it's pretty pretty adaptable to to make app map data. So let me just click here into for one example the the pet clinic application. This is like the main entry point of the Spring Pet Clinic. So I'll start, uh, you know. Click on the main there, and there'll be there's an option here: start pet clinic application with app map. So I will fire that off, um, and that will get the server going, and it will have app map enabled with that with that flag. Um, if I go into the run configuration here, maybe I'll be able to see what that see that option there. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's more invisible than that. But um I'll go over here, localhost eight thousand, uh, actually eighty eighty. It's hit my back end, you could see the, the scrolling here, and it's also generated a an an uh app map data recording here of the uh of the root URL. So um that information is now like available for Navi. So if I come over here and say new, new Navi chat, one of the things I might want to ask is um, how do I list, uh, here's an owner box. If I type in the name of an owner, like Bob, I, there's no owners. I, I just, I just want a list of all the owners. How do I list all the owners? So, you know, the first tool that I always reach for is to um, ask Navi and it will dig through the code as well, and also through the, the MMAP data that I have here. 
and it says to list all the owners, you can make a get request to the owner's endpoint without providing any parameters. Um, so basically it's saying if I just don't put anything in here, then it'll list all the owners for me. And, and that's what we see here. So if I go over here, it's, uh, you know, it's producing recordings of each of these requests. Here comes my owner's request uh, with the last name. And you can see comes eventually we're in the database with this like select distinct query and pulling out all the owners and then also querying uh, out the names of pets. There they are, Leo and Basil and other pets. So cool. That is one way to make app map data. Another app map, another way to make app map data is to come over here to Maven. Maven has tight, you know, tight integration with with IntelliJ. And if I if I stop this, um, you can see that I can write, I can click on a Maven target, and I will get the same kind of list of different ways to run my application, run Maven build. Um, and in this case, uh, there's other, other choices here, run debug profile, start spring pet clinic, bracket test, which is like the test um, target with that map. So if I run that, that should, um, you know, inject that, that Java agent flag and run the test with that map. And as those things are running, we should then see the, the data populate over here as that map records like um, an app map data file from, for example, this test case. I can click on this, find the test case. Great. So uh, there's two ways, that's two ways to make app map data. Request recording with the built-in button and I've just run it through, I've run the test through Maven. There's also, I can also run, oops, I can also run tests here. Um, again, here's like the start with app map option, which will do that. I think I can also go in here just to show you what would, what I would do if there was something, um, some situation where I wasn't getting like the app map data that I wanted. I would, here's the VM options. So I'd say Java agent. I'm not sure if you have to type the full path here, but I'm going to Java at map.jar. So this is like doing it the hard way. Uh, if I come up here, I can like delete all this data. I can always like get it back if I want it. And I can run, say, one of these classes. Runs the test cases with my uh, specially configured flag on there. And it didn't stick to that run. Java agent users can get them. Rerun. So I don't. I'm not a master of all these of all these buttons. I'm just showing like how if it doesn't work the first time, you know, I know what it is. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to set that Java agent flag. So I'll just brute force it. It's probably a cleaner way to do that. I, I didn't use the pop-up menu there, which I could have because um, I wanted to like intentionally demonstrate, you know, setting the, the option manually. So I did that and here is, uh, here's my app map data. So I'm going to go back now. Uh, I, I was going to run it from, run the test from here, but um, yeah, all right, let's give that a go. I want to do Sometimes you have to come down to this more run and debug. And so now I'm running all the test cases um, and they're, they're blasting off there. And um, 
the reason I'm running all of them is that I want to also show off like another feature that I haven't run for a little while, used for a little while, which is the at maps open API support. So if I go to the tool window at map and generate open API, it'll say, where do you want to put that? But the open API file and what it's doing is it's scrolling over all of the different um, you know it's crawling over that was not the right place to generate it from a map generate open API not not upland yes I don't want to add that so um, sorry about that so it crawled over all this app map data and you know, we, we, we were just digging into one of these a second ago, and you can see that it has this get request uh, and the response status. And so the idea is that by crawling over all the app map data that's available, this uh, app map open API tool can essentially like reverse engineer the, uh, the open API, AKA Swagger. Um, and there's other tools that can do that too. Uh, what's cool about this one, um, that I really like is that this information is based on the actual observed, uh, you know, web, web serving activity as it went through all the test cases. So, you know, if it says there's a 200 and a 302, that's real. Those really, those really happened. They were recorded. Um, it's not, uh, sort of, a in theory that it might record a 302, like it, it really, really did. What is not as good about this um let me change the title spring pet clinic what i might want to do is you know it doesn't pull out like descriptive information as much as it as it could have uh, because that information isn't in like the app data so um what i'd like to do with that is open like a navi chat and you can see i I went pretty quickly. I made a selection here, came over here, new Navi chat, or I can do that from up here. Um, explain with that map, Navi AI, that's kind of an old name for it. And um, it's got this open API YAML like in its context. So what I want to do is I want to, this route is called get owners, enhance the get owners uh, section with information from the code. So it's going to now go do, uh, it's going to, um, again, like consult that map data to find the most relevant information to my, to my question, which is about get slash owners. Um, also pull in code snippet data, owner controller, things like that. And now I get back the same essentially like, uh, you know, segment of the data, but now it's actually putting more information in here. It's even like stuck the source code in under X code examples. I don't know if I want that, but um, I can, you know, continue my, continue my conversation. Um, so I can say something like remove the code sample refactor the request and response into defined types, respond with the YAML only. So, you know, you don't get what you want exactly the first try. Um, that's that's how working with, with LLMs kind of is. Um, so, but hey, no, no great loss. You can just follow up the conversation and, and tell, it, tell it what you want. It's even throwing in some examples of uh you know examples of like parameter values so uh so cool this is a this is a pretty pretty nice uh process for combining like the structured yaml generation with uh supplementing with information from the code um and as i did this there was one thing i really couldn't i couldn't really help but do um I think I think I need to open the open API YAML for it to show up. 
Yeah, so there's there's a SNFD support in um, in IntelliJ for the schema. So that's why I have like this um, this display here. It still thinks it's called my project. So let me like open that again. All right, now it's called Spring Pet Clinic. It's actually validated it. Um, that's what this little badge is for. And um, I can create like a new schema mapping and I can call it Spring Pet Clinic. And a schema file. Oh, I have to like stick it in there. So now it's in my now it's in my schema list and I can use it for like um you know whatever I want. Um I don't actually know all the things that I can do with it. Um but you know one thing you can often do with like open API is you can like execute commands and do all kinds of well, there's many things that you can do, you know, run postman and other plugins like test out your API or you know just publish this. So that's uh that's that's kind of all I'm going to do for now. Making app map data a few different ways, understanding how you know what what's really happening there with with the Java agent flag that you already have that jar file on your machine. Um, and if it's not if it's not doing what you want, then it's probably really just a matter of figuring out how to set that argument. Um, you might have to try it once or twice, but there's always a little box in IntelliJ somewhere where you can do that. Um, and then I went through some some you know interesting like questions with navi so uh, i hope you enjoyed that and uh, thanks for watching